They're in a state of emergency in the Commonwealth. Good afternoon. I'm Stephanie Hudson. And I'm Amy Avery. We have crews on the Outer Banks in Virginia Beach and in Norfolk monitoring the condition and preparations ahead of the storm. But first, let's get right to meteorologist Don Slater in the Super Doppler 10 Weather Center. Don. Yeah, it is now a tropical storm, and it is very, very definitely a tropical storm. Uh, we can start to see it really in the satellite pictures. It didn't look like much. It didn't have a real, real center to the storm. But as of 1 o'clock, around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock this afternoon, uh, it started really getting a center right on into here. And, of course, we've seen the day progress. And as expected, everything is going as expected. Uh, this storm is starting to produce some rain. The wind has been picking up all day long. And we're going to continue to see an increase in rainfall uh, and in the wind picking on up. Here's where things are right now. Here's the latest on the storm. Now, by 8 o'clock tonight, it's got 65-mile-an-hour winds. It makes landfall uh, tomorrow morning, probably around 6 o'clock in the morning, and then by 8 o'clock in the morning, it's got 60-mile-an-hour winds. It could even become uh, a hurricane, a 75-mile-an-hour hurricane for a short time before it makes landfall. That doesn't mean anything, really, to us because it's going to continue to weaken very rapidly. Uh, there's where things are by 8 o'clock in the evening, 45-mile-an-hour winds, basically toward the Franklin area, and then it falls apart from there, 35, then 30-mile-an-hour winds on up toward Washington and Baltimore. So what's going to happen with us? Obviously, we're getting some rainfall out of it now. As the center of that storm draws closer, and moves very tight right on in over the top of our area. Out ahead of it, uh, we'll see a ball of heavy, heavy rainfall move on through. Right now, it's light to moderate rain, a little bit more scattered for right now into the Hampton Roads area. I want to show you what's going on with the wind that we've had over the past 12 hours from 4 o'clock this morning. We'll stop things at 11 o'clock this morning. We're starting to see winds gusting 25, 30 miles an hour. And these are going to continue to increase. You can see the red colors rolling in, 43 mile an hour wind uh, gusts already now into Norfolk. That will likely increase to around 50, 60. Now, one of the things we should uh, be concerned about, obviously the strong winds. We'll see winds gusting to 55, 60, uh, 60 along the shoreline, uh, 45 to 50 farther inland. Tidal flooding for those affected by tornadoes. Really, it's a, it's a small area, but there is that risk. Uh, it's for the outer banks uh, and perhaps right along the oceanfront in Virginia Beach during the overnight hours. But the biggest thing for everybody is heavy, heavy rainfall coming up overnight. The bulk of this is going to be happening overnight. I'm going to show you what exactly it's all going to be doing. That will be coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thanks, Don. Well, there is a threat of storm surge on the Outer Banks. Some visitors and residents left ahead of the storm, but some aren't going anywhere. 10 on your side, Andy Fox joins us now live from Rodanthe. Andy, what are you seeing out there? Hey, listen, just in the last 15 minutes, everything has really picked up. We're here at the Rodanthe Pier, shielded by the pier here, which is helping us a lot because the wind's blowing this way. Take a look out here. You can see the end of the Rodanthe Pier. We are shielded from the wind by it. All day long, the wind has been blowing from the east. Dare County Emergency Management noting the hazardous ocean conditions. We have seen no one in the water. Rip current conditions affecting the coast. Breakaway waves over the next 24 hours. Expecting winds to pick up with tropical force winds out of the east. Expected to blow two to four feet of storm surge. We spoke earlier today with the... Dare County Emergency Management Director Drew Pearson and also with the Bourne family from Durham, North Carolina, who will not leave until their weekly rental is over tomorrow. Well, storm surge is life-threatening conditions that uh, bring rapidly rising water across normally dry ground. So we really want people to be aware of it. We need people to be uh, uh, mindful of it. They need to protect their property. No, we're staying put. Uh, we feel safe where we are and we want to get our whole weekend. So we're just riding it out. We have plenty of food, plenty of drink, lots of games. Keep us busy. So the Bourne family is staying put. Coming up tonight on Wavy News 10 at 5, we are also going to be talking about Dare County Emergency Management and what they're doing. They also said a lot of the cars that were leaving today were people like the Bournes who decided to leave, although the Bournes decided to stay. They are the early ones leaving. Those were all the cars leaving from Hatteras Island. I'll have another live update coming up at 4.30. In Rodanthe, Andy Fox, 10 on your side.
All right. Thanks, Andy. Well, if you do live in Virginia Beach and you want to move your car to higher ground, you can park for free at City Garages at 9th and 31st Streets through noon on Sunday. Parking is also available at the four garages at Town Center. Those garages are at Apex Entertainment, the Westin Hotel, Armada Hoffler, and Clark Nexon Tower. Don't park in the 24-hour reserve spaces, though. You will be towed. City crews in Virginia Beach have been checking storm drains and pump stations ahead of the storm. The city says high water vehicles and bucket trucks are ready to respond. 10 on your side's Raven Payne continues our team coverage from Virginia Beach. Raven, what are you seeing where you are? Yes, well, you guys, Tropical Storm Ophelia, we finally put a name to what's causing the bad weather out here. The heavy rain has stopped as of 30 minutes ago, even though we're still having some sprinkles. But we are still sacked with some very, very strong wind out here by the beach. Now, today marks the start of some dangerous weather in Virginia Beach. There are large waves, possibilities of tidal flooding, and more. The city has built berms to protect the Neptune Festival tent to the right of me, and that's to prevent ocean overwash we could see from this storm. There have been multiple patrols along the beach, including Virginia Beach Life Saving Service, the police department and public works management. The weather is also causing a lot of closures in the area. City officials say all after school activities are canceled with the exception of the Parks and Recreation Program. The side of the storm has been attracting many people like Kay Seagrave to the boardwalk. The Virginia Beach resident tells me she thinks it's beautiful, saying her fascination with storms goes back to when she was a teenager. We lived at the beach, and whenever there was a hurricane coming, as a teenager, we'd put on our bathing suits and come down and walk along the ocean front. And we didn't go swimming, but we were down here to see it, and it was fun. However, this storm is dangerous. The city advises all residents to have an emergency plan and kit to know your evacuation zones and to remove anything from outside your home that could go flying in this strong wind. I'll have more for you in about 30 minutes. Live at the Oster Front, Raven Payne, turn on your side. All right, Raven, thank you. And now to Norfolk. This was the scene at East Beach this morning. The water in the bay was rough. Yeah, 10 on your side. Michelle Wolf is live right now in Norfolk. And Michelle, crews have been busy preparing for these storm conditions, right? Yeah, Amy and Stephanie, they have. So right now I'm on Plume Street and Waterside Drive. It started raining about two hours ago, and you know what? The rain's actually not that bad right now. We've noticed a few large puddles on the roads, but no flooding yet. The thing that is bad is the wind. A few minutes ago, I was watching two ladies across the street. They were holding their umbrellas, the tops of their umbrellas, with both hands because the wind is enough that it's knocking them inside out. So. That's where we are now. We're standing in front of the Nauticus pedestrian bridge and the floodgates were closed this morning out of precaution. You can see some sandbags at the corners here just in case the water level does reach through just to make sure that no water seeps underneath the gate. And public works crews have spent the day clearing out drains and ditches. The Vactor trucks are ready to go and are on call throughout the weekend. If you live in downtown Norfolk in a low-lying area that's prone to flooding, you can park in the York Street garage until 9 a.m. Sunday. So again, if you need parking, you have free parking in case you need it. And remember, don't drive through flooded roads. We see this every time we're out here covering a tropical storm. I'm live like I am now, and then I watch somebody try to drive through and they get stuck. So please use your common sense. But just to recap, it's not too bad right now in downtown Norfolk. It sounds like that might change as it gets a little bit later. So we'll provide you with updates every half hour on the conditions here in Norfolk. Live in Norfolk, Michelle Wolf, 10 on your side. Michelle, thank you. In Hampton, public works clean ditches and storm drains and also trim trees ahead of the storm. This is a look at Buckrow Beach earlier today. The city of Hampton is opening an emergency shelter at 5 p.m. at the Phoenix School on Big Bethel Road. Pets will be accepted. We posted information about shelter guidelines on wavy.com. Several events in Hampton are canceled. Many facilities are closed. Our digital team is on your side with a full list of cancellations, closures, and postponements. You'll find it on wavy.com. He had his wife's passport and credit cards with him, but not his wife. The murder trial continued today in Newport News for Adrian Lewis, charged in the death of his wife, Shanita. She went missing in July of last year and has never been found. Investigative reporter Chris Horn is covering the trial and has new information for us tonight. Chris? Amy, yeah, and Lewis was waiting at a gate at Dulles International, getting ready to board a flight to Jamaica. 
It was about 24 hours after the last time anyone ever saw Shanita Your Lewis. Just the day before, Lewis had told the couple's two sons that he was leaving town and that their Aunt Deidre would take care of them. He never said anything about their mother taking care of them. He first boarded a flight from Norfolk to Dulles. ...with a woman from Jordan in an airport smoking lounge. She testified Thursday that Lewis told her that his wife was missing, but that he had to go to a wedding. The woman said Lewis spoke of his wife in the past tense. Lewis was holding a ticket for Jamaica, departing Dulles at 12.30 that afternoon, July 18th of last year. But Newport News detectives were on their way up to Dulles. Special agent from Homeland Security detained Lewis before he could board the flight. And when the detectives arrived, they searched Lewis's backpack and found Shanita's passport and three credit cards. And naturally, detectives had lots of questions about that. I'll have that part of the story coming up at 5.30. Chris Horn, 10 in your side. All right, thank you, Chris. Our coverage of the storm continues here at 4. We're on your side with important information about caring for your car. I talked with an expert about why it's so important to make sure you're parked on higher ground during a storm. But first, how is Dominion Energy getting ready for what's headed our way and staying storm ready all year long? Foreclosures are on the rise. The road to financial freedom can at times seem dark. Let Alliance Legal Group light the way and avoid foreclosure through bankruptcy. For over 25 years, our faith-based law practices served Hampton Roads and helped clients through successful bankruptcy cases. Visit DebtFreeVA.com. You can file without leaving your house. Our no-obligation chat rep can help you with any questions. Now's the time for a fresh start. Let Alliance Legal Group carry the weight for you and head into the new year with a bright horizon in front of you. News Nation has a trust rating higher than CNN, Fox, and MSNBC. You can only be the most trusted name in news with the most trusted names in news. Another reason why News Nation is news for all America. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. If I could be you you could be me for just one hour walk a mile in my shoes walk a mile in my shoes thank you so much fostering a pet for a friend or neighbor can keep families together learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org Best Reviews is an unbiased team that researches products in real-world situations to give reliable recommendations on just about everything. For the best reviews, go to bestreviews.com. Seriously, before you buy anything, ever. You're watching Wavy News 10 at 4 with Stephanie Hudson, Regina Mobley, and Chief Meteorologist Emeritus Don Slater. 
New at four, the Norfolk Commonwealth's attorney has announced he will not be pursuing charges against police in the deadly shooting of Antonio Beekman last year. Norfolk police said they were attempting to apprehend Beekman last June for multiple warrants related to firearms charges when he opened fire on them. In Bonnie Cam video played during a press conference this afternoon, officers are shown firing repeatedly at Beekman, hitting him 21 times. Norfolk Commonwealth's attorney Ramin Fadahi also said that had Beekman lived, he probably would have pursued charges against him for firing at officers. Dominion Energy is preparing for possible power outages during the storm. We checked in at their Norfolk location earlier today where crews were packing their bags and loading trucks. A spokesperson told me that they are moving crews and trucks to northeastern North Carolina and the Outer Banks. They have extra bucket trucks and extra equipment as well as a number of contractors on hand. But they're hoping that improvements they've started making to the grid over the last few years will mean fewer outages overall. One of the things we've been doing in recent years is called grid hardening. And what that means is we are using different types of equipment that can withstand harsher weather conditions. These poles, for example, the new one on the right is much wider in diameter and goes deeper into the ground. It also has a fiberglass cross arm, which can withstand higher wind speeds and won't deteriorate like the older wooden ones. Now, if you do lose power during the storm, Dominion wants to remind you to report the loss using their free app or call it in. And if you see a downed line, stay away from it. I'll have more on improvements Dominion has made to reduce outages coming up at 5. The Norfolk Airport Authority says it's monitoring the weather and any potential impact on operations at Norfolk International. The airport's storm center is open and will remain open as needed throughout the weekend. Crews are also securing the airfield. There are also a handful of delays with both departures and arrivals. So if you are traveling or expecting a traveler, check the flight status with the airline. Now, your Super Doppler 10 forecast with Chief Meteorologist Emeritus Don Slater. Okay, take a look at what I'll be covering here in the next few minutes. Uh, what we've got going on during the overnight hours, what we're looking at uh, is the possibility, well, not the likelihood, really, uh, this is going to be the worst of it in terms of tides, winds, downpours. Prepare as you can uh, for this whole situation. It's the kind of thing where it's raining out already, uh, but if you've got loose tree limbs or if you've got patio furniture, especially that kind of thing, or a trampoline, uh, secure those so they don't go blowing through the neighbor's a, a picture window, all right, So, uh, or, or worse. So, again, just lock stuff down. It's not going to be a horrible storm, not the worst we've ever seen, but nonetheless, you know we got, you, you'll be awakened quite likely uh, by the wind and rainfall during the overnight hours. For Saturday, not as bad. Off and on, windy and rainy, we'll see some minor to moderate tidal flooding uh, at around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It might be tough getting around. It'll be really tough getting around uh, coming up overnight in terms of tides. We'll show you what's going on with everything, set things in motion. Uh, the low pressure area became closed uh, this afternoon at around 1, 2 o'clock. Uh, and you can see it's now a very definite low pressure area. And it's a tropical uh, low pressure area. So it thus became Tropical Storm Ophelia. And it makes a difference in terms of what you expect out of it. If it's got lots of warm air in it, uh, you can expect one thing. If it's got lots of cool air wrapped on into it, it becomes a subtropical storm or just a coastal storm lifting north northward on through the region, and that's what it's going to be doing, lifting directly right on through the area. We are seeing some breakups in some of the rainfall into the region for right now, so it's nothing too terribly bad. In terms of tides, yesterday we thought that the tide tomorrow afternoon would be the worst, and it was kind of dubious of that, but now the forecast models are going uh, during the overnight hours. That looks like it will be the worst tide, so move your car, uh, put your car in a place where it's not, not going to get flooded out if you live on a flood-prone street, that kind of thing, uh, coming up for the overnight hours. 6.4, uh, 6.5 is major, so it'll be on the, uh, it'll be basically be on the high end of moderate tidal flooding coming on up. Now, high tide forecasts, these are low end major uh, for any of these that say major tidal flooding. It'll be on the low end of major tidal flooding, and some of these are really unoccupied areas. Kip to Peak, for example, is not really, really occupied, uh, but it does give you an idea of what's going on. Kip to Peak is on the bay side, Windmill Point in the bay, uh, Oregon Inlet, the south. 
downside wind shifts. And so Saturday afternoon, uh, we could see some tidal flooding. This storm is now fully formed. I want to show you these spaghetti forecast models. They've got a good handle on where everything is. And most of them are poking it a little bit farther inland now than they were just a couple of hours ago. They've updated. Uh, 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 and when I opened this up a couple of minutes ago, I went, whoa, wow. They've shifted things. And there's still some that are kind of crazy out there, not knowing what to do with it. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we want to see where this thing is going. There's still some wiggle room in terms of where this is going to be going exactly uh, and how strong it's going to be as well, especially by tomorrow morning. There's where things are 65 mile an hour winds by 8 o'clock tonight. Right now it's got 60 mile an hour winds. Take you to tomorrow morning at 8. This could become a 75 mile an hour minimal hurricane as it makes landfall. It doesn't make a, a huge difference uh, whatsoever for us. Uh, what it means is that it's, it's still stronger. It's going to move over the Gulf Stream. This has got it by 8 o'clock in the evening, pulling abreast of our area. That's where things are by uh, 8 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. It's gone. Things are winding on down real, real nicely. Uh, here's where it's going to be going. This one goes a little, this forecast model is a little bit faster uh, with things. It's going to be making landfall instead of 8 o'clock in the morning. It's got it about 2, 3 in the morning. That's where things are at 7 in the morning. Uh, and you can see this band of heavy rain right on through here. There could be anywhere between two inches of rain near the coastline, up to about four or five inches of rain into some of our inland counties and on up toward the Richmond area, as basically what's the comma head of this storm lifts on northward, starts to fall apart toward the Washington and Baltimore areas, and by Sunday, again, uh, it's moving on through. We're moving on through and moving on out, and we end up with some decent weather. Really, I think tomorrow is not even going to be a washout, and we'll see a 60% chance of rain in the morning, 40% chance in the afternoon. It'll be windiest over night. It'll still be windy off and on during the day tomorrow. Breezy on Sunday. Uh, temperatures over the next seven days into the mid-70s each afternoon. Don, thank you. I'm Maria Elena Baloris, and here's what's coming up on Wavy News 10, starting at 5. New at 5, a change in Social Security benefits in 2024. Our Richmond Bureau is looking into the cost of living adjustments, and we'll have more on what you can expect. Then at 5.30, a new office in the White House focused on preventing gun violence. Our D.C. Bureau explains who's overseeing it and what the office will do. Two parents in Virginia Beach are filing a lawsuit, hoping to force the school system to adopt the governor's model policies for transgender students. We'll explain at 6. See these stories beginning at 5. Tom and I will see you in just a few minutes. Lena, thank you. Still ahead here at 4, preparing for potential property damage ahead of a storm. We're on your side with what you need to know. And we're following other local news headlines. In addition to the storm, what we've learned about two crashes today in Norfolk next. Gracias. Thank you. What's wrong, mijo? Donating to a pet's medical care can keep families together. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. I'm an actor in an ad. I was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Telling the girls about my Alzheimer's diagnosis was really hard. Early detection gave us time to adapt together. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. There is only one thing that will save somebody's life, and that is naloxone nasal spray. Get 911 on the phone. Get the emergency responses there on their way. Best Reviews is an unbiased team that researches products in real-world situations to give reliable recommendations on just about everything. Call that a plasma sword? For the best reviews, go to bestreviews.com. Seriously, before you buy anything, ever. Veterans, when you're struggling, soon becomes later, becomes someday, becomes when. Don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. If you're buzzed and doing this to make yourself feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive.
Developing news now, state police are investigating an early morning interstate crash at the HRBT. It happened around 2.30 in Norfolk on 64 at the HRBT. Dispatchers say at least four people were hurt. We're working to find out how the victims are doing and more about this crash. A 10 on your side viewer sent us pictures from another crash this morning in Norfolk. It happened around 8 a.m. and on Poplar Hill Drive. A car overturned and we're told no one was seriously hurt. Straight ahead in our next half hour here at 4, live team coverage of Tropical Storm Ophelia. We have crews on the Outer Banks and here in Hampton Roads. Meteorologist Don Slater has an update on the storm next. Plus, what Virginia State Police want you to do and not to do before and during the storm. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments. Start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Why would drug dealers put a lethal dose of fentanyl in drugs if they know it's so harmful? It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. Really just all about the money. Telling the girls about my Alzheimer's diagnosis was really hard. Early detection gave us time to adapt together. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. When they learn something new and you can just see in their faces, it's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are my favorite. Yes, thank you. What's wrong, mijo? Donating to a pet's medical care can keep families together. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at mhtsa.gov slash the right seat. First at 430, we're tracking the tropics, more specifically tropical storm Ophelia. The rain is falling and the wind is expected to pick up. There's also the potential for flooding and possibly tornadoes. We have team coverage. Uh, we have reporters monitoring what's happening across Hampton Roads and on the Outer Banks. But first, let's get the latest on the storm from meteorologist Don Slater. <laughs> And we're looking at something live right now. This is from Waves, North Carolina on the sound side. And look at this. Uh, there's no water. Well, there's water, but it's mud. It's muck uh, because there's more of an easterly wind and blowing that water on away to the other side of the sound of the Pamlico Sound. So again, uh, this is what, sometimes what happens and it really is an extreme. There's a pier right here and you can see again sound side where we are. What's going on is that wind is pushing the water into the, sea, the ocean side, uh, but it's pushing it on away on the sound side. Here's basically a, a 
brief explanation, very brief explanation of what's going on. Waves is right about here on the Outer Banks. Uh, the name of the town has disappeared. Uh, but nonetheless, that's what's going on. It's a northeasterly wind. They've had some rainfall going on. Uh, and again, that, uh, that rainfall uh, is not affecting things in terms of the wind uh, over the, uh, or in terms of the water. But that's where things are uh, in terms of that whole situation. Okay. Where is the storm? The storm is now really, really easy to identify where this thing is. Uh, you can see the uh, circulation rolling right on up into here, likely to move right on up into here towards Smyrna, uh, southwest of uh, Ocracoke, for example, right on into here is where it's expected to be coming up tomorrow morning, making landfall. And here's where it's expected to go over the next couple of days. And the Hurricane Center stops tracking it by Sunday evening. It becomes wrapped up really uh, with a continental air. In other words, it's dry air, cool air, so it becomes very non-tropical. It could even become a minor hurricane, a 75-mile-an-hour hurricane, uh, before it makes landfall coming up tomorrow morning. But it is of no uh, great consequence for our part of the world. Here's what's going on uh, with this storm. Possible Ophelia impacts. We bumped this up a little bit. There could be some brief isolated tornadoes into coastal areas of Virginia and farther southward along the Outer Banks. Everybody's going to get the heavy rain. Some strong winds. Some tidal flooding uh, going on. Here's what's going on. Outer banks, four to six inches of rain, 40 to 60 mile an hour winds. Oceanside impact in terms of tides today, tonight, sound side flooding late Saturday, two to five inches of rain here, 30, 45 mile an hour winds gusting to 50. South side, two to five inches of rainfall, uh, gust to 50, moderate low end uh, major tidal flooding as we are for the peninsula's middle peninsula, eastern shore as well. In terms of what's going on, you can read for your area. We'll have a lot more for you coming up in a few minutes. All right. Thanks, Don. Well, 10 on your Stand sides. By. Andy Fox has been reporting live from the outer range. Since midday. Andy, uh, looks really windy out there right now. How are you doing out there? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, right now, the rain has stopped. So I want to, we were able to come here, not hidden behind the, the pier anymore, but listen to this. Yeah. That's a good 30 miles per hour. Gusting up, you hear it? That's what's going on out here. Let me show you underneath the pier. Come on over here. Chris Wynn behind the camera. Take a look down here. You see the waves just crashing on the pilings there, coming in, rip current conditions affecting the coast. Breakaway waves over the next 24 hours, expecting winds to pick up with tropical force. Winds out of the east expected to blow two to four feet of storm surge. But right now, we're given this opportunity to bring you out here and to show you what it is. And let me leave you with, once again, the sounds of the wind. That's what it's blowing out here. But luckily, guys, no rain. I'll have another live report coming up on Wavy News 10 of 5. I hope you don't take off there, Andy. <laughs> the sounds of the wind. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> Now to Virginia Beach. And that's where we're going to find Raven Payne live right now. And she's got a look at what's going on in Virginia Beach. Hi, Raven. Hey, you guys. Well, I don't know how it's possible, but this wind is just getting stronger out here. I'm trying to brace myself from how powerful it is. It's actually going in and now it'll be fine and then I'll just get a blast of wind at me at a moment's notice. However, the rain has died down a little bit, but what I do want to show you are these waves behind me. Take a look. It looks like they're actually getting larger and stronger by the minute. Just take a look at how they're crashing into the rocks out here at the ocean front. Now, because of how dangerous this water is right now, no one is allowed to be in the ocean for their safety. Now, not only is the beach in store for some dangerous conditions, but so are the surrounding areas. The city is telling residents to brace themselves for this storm. Remove anything from outside your home that could go flying in this strong wind right now and have an emergency plan and kit. Uh, more for you coming up at five. Live at the oceanfront, Raven Payne, turn on your side. Raven, thank you. Ten on your size, Michelle Wolf continues our storm coverage now. She is live in Norfolk. And Michelle, how is it where you are right now? 
Yeah, I mean, if it stays like this the rest of the night, that would be wonderful. The rain is really, really slowed down. It's not too bad out right now. The wind is another story, but I want to say, you know, I'm off of Plume Street and Waterside Drive in front of the Nauticus floodgates. It was closed this morning. You can see some sandbags that are placed here in case the water level gets high enough just so it doesn't seep underneath the gates here. Public works crews have been busy throughout the day clearing drains and ditches. Vector trucks will be operating throughout the day today and will be on call throughout the weekend. If you live downtown in an area that's prone to flooding, you can park in the York Street garage and Brambleton lot through 9 a.m. Sunday morning. You don't want to take a chance driving through high water and getting stuck. We've seen it every time we cover tropical storms. We're not anticipating this one to be as significant as, as so many others, but we're treating it as if it was. So we're going through all the steps to prepare in terms of making sure the pump stations are operational, the floodgates are, 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 are operational with plans to close them at various times. Uh, we've made parking garages available to folks who live in low-lying areas. Now we'll continue to keep an eye on conditions here in Norfolk. We'll have another update for you at 5 o'clock. Live in Norfolk, Michelle Wolf, 10 on your side. All right, thanks, Michelle. In Portsmouth, residents in low-lying areas can move their cars to one of the parking garages in Old Town. Those garages are on Middle Street, Water Street, and County Street. Now, you must move your vehicle by 7 a.m. Monday. Do not park in spaces marked reserved. And a reminder, you can monitor the storm with the free Wavy Weather app. Just take a picture of the QR code on your screen and the app will automatically come up for you. You will have access to live radar, the hour-by-hour -hour forecast, and weather blogs. Be sure to turn on the weather alerts. Coming up at 5, ready for response. Tropical storm Ophelia could cause some road problems for many commuters in our region. See how crews in North Carolina are preparing to help. How prepared are you for the storm? What your insurance company wants you to keep in mind. But first, we're following other local news headlines. In addition to Ophelia, several suspects face charges after authorities raided a home in Gloucester County when investigators say they found at the property. You're watching Wavy News 10 at 4 with Stephanie Hudson, Regina Mobley, and Chief Meteorologist Emeritus Don Slater. You or a loved one has been injured due to someone else's negligence. The Stolute Law Firm wants to right that wrong by getting you maximum compensation. The Stolute Law Firm is the one to know. Our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Kind of like being a father in this world. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Talk to me if you're feeling sad. Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Telling the girls about my Alzheimer's diagnosis was really hard. Early detection gave us time to adapt together. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat.
From the station on your side, you're watching Wavy News 10 at 4. Four people face charges in connection to a drug investigation in Gloucester County. The Sheriff's Office and Virginia State Police Tri-River Drug Task Force executed a search warrant on Indian Road. Investigators say back in July they found more than 500 grams of cocaine and $20,000 in cash and at what they call a fortified residence. Earlier this month, authorities arrested 56-year-old Weldon Lockley, 55-year-old Charlotte Mullins, 57-year-old William Whitting, and 61-year-old Philip Ward. Developing news in Norfolk, police are investigating a shooting. It happened around 3 yesterday afternoon on Hugert Street. And investigators say the victim showed up at Santera Norfolk General Hospital for treatment. He is expected to survive. And there's still a few things you can do inside this weekend. We're living local with some ideas for those of you ready to get out and about after the rain moves on. But make sure you move your car to a safe place first or you're not going anywhere. What car experts want you to think about before you get in too deep. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Veterans, whatever you're going through, don't wait. Reach out. Why would drug dealers put a lethal dose of fentanyl in drugs if they know it's so harmful? It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. Really just all about the money. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Everybody in my house knows how to ride a bike except me. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you didn't. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. From the station on your side, you're watching Wavy News 10 at 4. With Tropical Storm Ophelia rolling in, we are on your side making sure you're prepared for potential property damage. Now, there are steps you can take before a storm happens to lessen the possibility. Experts suggest knowing how to properly file a damage claim with your insurance company before damage happens. You'll also want to know what rights you have according to your insurance policy. Plus, there are physical steps that you can take at your home before the worst of the weather hits. Make sure stuff's not flying around the backyard. Make sure you turn lawn chairs over. Uh, make sure stuff is out of the wind up next to the house if you can get it up there. Uh, if there's any debris in the yard, you can pick it up quick. I'd do that. Make sure you understand what your deductibles are on your insurance policy. Up on Wavy News 10 at 5.30, our Julie Millay takes a look at what insurance adjusters say is one of the biggest threats to homeowners in Hampton Roads. 
And if you live in Chesapeake and need to move your car to higher ground, you can park in the garage at the Chesapeake campus of Tidewater Community College. You can only park on the second and third floors on a first come first serve basis. The garage is closed between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. You must move your car by 8 a.m. on Monday. And Norfolk residents who need to move their cars to higher ground can park in the York Street garage and the Brambleton lot. They're open and free through 9 a.m. on Sunday. Now it's important to move your car to higher ground when the tides do rise because they could do a lot of damage otherwise. In low-lying areas like The Hague and Norfolk, we see a lot of cars taking in water during tidal events like these. And of course, if you do see high water, it's important to not drive through it. Bannister Nissan COO Mike Pulley says if the water is higher than your tire, then that's probably a good sign that it's too high for your car. He says it can do a lot of damage to the engine and cause some electrical issues. Your vehicle gets flooded. It's more than just that engine part of it that could be that could take place. There's also some electrical issues that could also happen. So a lot of things could be affected in that regard. But we actually have to take all the carpet out, go through the electronic aspects of it, and make sure that everything is okay. Pulley also says that they have to prepare their dealerships for weather events like these too, so they try to move as many cars as they can inside their showroom. Coming up later tonight at 6, the preps that you can take and some of the free places that you can also move your car to. Virginia State Police ask you to stay off the roads during the storm if you can. If you have to go out, slow down so you have more time to safely react and avoid a crash, down trees or debris in the road. Also, don't tailgate. And you've heard it before, turn around, don't drown. Never drive through standing water. What looks like a puddle can be deep and swift moving water. Make sure your headlights are on and wear your seatbelt. And finally, put down your phone. Now, your Super Doppler 10 forecast with Chief Meteorologist Emeritus Don Slater. As of about 2 o'clock this afternoon, the low became fully formed. And what happened with it is that it attained a closed uh, low pressure area right on into there. And you can see it. It's swirling on around. It becomes a cyclone. And that's what, when it became Ophelia at around 1, 2 o'clock this afternoon. You see that rainfall steadily increasing throughout the region uh, for the day today, as did the winds. Now, the forecast models have now got a handle on where this thing is going, a uh, better handle than they did earlier because it wasn't a definite center uh, to the thing. It was spread out all over the place, but now it's a fairly tight uh, cyclone right on into there, and it's kind of lifting a little bit farther to the west, uh, according to some of these models. Regardless, it's still on track uh, to move on through our area during the day uh, coming up for tomorrow, and we're going to get a moderate tropical storm uh, moving on through with heavy rain, some tides, uh, and some wind, and possibly even in coastal areas, we could see some tornadoes. Now, they'd be isolated tornadoes, and they'd be very very brief. We're going to have 50 mile an hour wind gusts. So you get a tornado with a with a winds gusting a little higher than that, and it's rain wrapped, and they're real real quick, uh, and they do tiny bit of damage, and then they're gone. Uh, so we'll watch out for that. Here's what's going on: uh, 60 mile an hour winds. <coughs> probably as of the latest update gusting to 65 miles an hour. It could even become a minimal hurricane sometime, not at 8 o'clock in the evening. But as it moves over some very, very warm waters, and just before making landfall, uh, once it makes landfall at 60 miles an hour, but just before making landfall, it could even bump up to a hurricane briefly, but it's of no uh, real big consideration for our area. But it could happen. Uh, it's not likely to do anything, make any difference for what we do. Here's where it is by 8 o'clock in the evening, 45 mile an hour wind, still a tropical storm, uh, becomes a tropical depression or subtropical depression. It gets mixed in with some colder air over the continent and tends to go away. Now, this forecast model is updated. I want to show you what's going on. It's a little bit slower than it was earlier. It's got it making landfall between Wilmington and Hatteras, about where the Hurricane Center has things, and with about the same timing, perhaps a little bit earlier, uh, but not that awfully much. Look at this band of rain right on through here and on up into inland portions of our area, just east of I-95 uh, and along I-95. Of course, we're getting some bands of rain. Any one of these little tiny areas of thunderstorms that could move on through, they won't have that much thunder uh, with them. Uh, uh, tropical systems don't usually have a great deal of lightning, but they could have a quick spin-up in terms of some heavy rain and a tornado. But then during the day, look at the heaviest rainfall is moving on up on the I-95 corridor uh, with some very heavy rain. There's where 
sure it is, uh, by 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Now we let it go from there, and it moves all the way on up toward Baltimore and then moves on off toward Long Island eventually. Uh, and then we end up with some very quiet weather, really, for Sunday. Closer view of things, uh, add the rainfall, add the wind gusts here, and the temperature is 32 to 45, 32 to 45. Uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, 36 to 50 along the ocean front. Could be some gusts higher than that uh, for the, uh, the outer banks, around 60 miles an hour, uh, low 70s for the most part. And then we see that rain break up. I don't think we're going to see a washout of a day on Saturday. I think we'll see some rainfall. Certainly inland areas are really going to see uh, some rainfall. And there's been agreement on that. And look at the winds uh, more easterly, 25 to 35, 30 to 40. They kind of uh, pick up and back off. Off. And there is the low right there toward Emporia, uh, lifting its way northward. There's where things are by 7. It's really slowed down. We've got more of a southerly wind flow. And along the Outer Banks, there could be some uh, sound side flooding uh, with more of a westerly wind flow, southwesterly wind flow there. That's where things are at 1 o'clock in the morning. And then it's gone from there, and it moves on away for Sunday uh, during the day and certainly for the day on Monday. So we've got to better our handle on what things, are, what's going on with this thing as time goes by. Uh, you can see, what, two inches, two inches, three and a half inches, uh, four inches, maybe even five inches into some of these areas. And you'll note, again, along the I-95 corridor, uh, but for the Hampton Roads area, eastern shore, uh, two and a half to three and a half inches of rainfall as well. And we're going to see winds gusting uh, to around 50 miles an hour near the shore. Now here's a, com it's kind of a comparison Pendium, a whole bunch of models put together, uh, and uh, the folks at the uh, Storm Prediction Center, uh, in, which is in Norman, Oklahoma. Anyway, they put this together. It's four inches, four inches, five inches there, four inches, and then three inches here, three inches here. So all these forecast models, when you put them all together, uh, they are predicting some heavy rainfall for the area. They're also predicting tides to be up, especially overnight, right on the very, very edge of being major tidal flooding. Uh, coming up for the area, 5.5 uh, tomorrow afternoon. That's backed off a little bit. Uh, so again, this is going to be a tropical storm, a good, strong tropical storm. It's not going to be a hurricane for us whatsoever. Uh, you're going to know that you got kicked, especially during the overnight hours with some heavy rain. During the day tomorrow, we'll start out with some rainfall, and then that rain should taper off. It'll still be rather windy, but not as windy as it gets during the overnight hours. Uh, Jeff Arnoldson, is that his name? Uh, Edmondson, what, I'm looking at him over there. He's, he's going to be with you over night. He'll let you know about it. I'll be here into the evening as well uh, to let you know what's going on. All right. Thanks, Don. Well, a reminder, you can have this, you can monitor the storm with the free wavy weather app. Just take a picture of the QR code on your screen and the app will automatically come up for you. And then you'll have access to live radar, the hour by hour forecast and weather blogs. Be sure to turn on the weather alerts. Well, part of the weekend may be a washout, but there's still plenty to do in Hampton Roads. Digital desk host Sarah Good shows us some of the different events taking place if you are living local. Here's a look at what's happening this weekend in Hampton Roads. This is Monster Jam is back at the Hampton Coliseum. All weekend long watch as the 12,000 pound monster trucks show off their skills in this competition. Don't miss a chance to meet your favorite drivers and see the monster trucks up close right in the pit. A new exhibit is opening this weekend at the Virginia Aquarium. Amazing pollinators will take visitors on 48 different adventures in a unique maze all to learn about the world of pollinators and plants. They are vital to um, our environment and our food supply. This is exactly what this exhibit will showcase. The Halloween countdown is on at Busch Gardens. Hallow Scream is back for the season. Get ready for screams and scares with themed rides and shows. Select weekends, visit the park for daytime family fun at Halloween Spooktacular. For more weekend events, head to wavy.com. Sarah Good, 10 on your side. Well, the weather is impacting a lot of events and services. Our digital team is on your side with a full list of cancellations, closures, and postponements right now on wavy.com. Coming up on Wavy News 10 at 5, protecting our power. And that's the focus for Dominion Energy as tropical storm Ophelia moves through our area. See how crews are getting ready to respond. Plus, support for seniors. Social Security recipients will see the largest increase in benefits in years. See how much money you can expect to receive. And coming up at 5.30, a murder trial continues on the peninsula. See what happened in the case of a man accused of killing his wife whose body hasn't been found. 
Also at 5.30, insurance issues, thanks to storms much like Ophelia and bigger ones, why homeowners are finding it tough to pay the insurance bill these days at 5.30. And at 6, turn around, don't drown. This isn't just about you. A car expert will tell you how costly it could be if you dare to decide to drive onto a flooded road. That's at 6. Everybody in my house knows how to ride a bike except me. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you didn't. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. Why would drug dealers put a lethal dose of fentanyl in drugs if they know it's so harmful? It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. Really just all about the money. Fostering a pet for a friend or neighbor can keep families together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Veterans, when you're struggling, soon becomes later, becomes someday, becomes when. Don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. News Nation is getting noticed. A remarkable expansion of viewership. These primetime numbers have erupted. Sticking to the both sides playbook. That's why News Nation is getting traction. To find News Nation on your TV, visit joinnn.com. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Man, it's lonely. Going through life, it's lonely. There is the therapeutic aspect of music. New at four, a rural central Virginia woman heard loud banging noises outside of her home in the middle of the night. So she called the sheriff's office thinking it was a burglar. The Amelia County resident checked her security camera and she could barely believe what she saw. Like a loud beating type noise um, against my window right underneath my bedroom, like right in my bedroom. And it turns out it was a bear uh, actually ripping the siding off of my house. Wow. Oh my. That is what <laughs> Destiny Layman's surveillance cameras recorded around 2 a.m. on Sunday. The bear ripped down lights, tore shingles off her roof, and knocked over the surveillance camera. The bear went to my front and my back door and did the same thing. It was beating on the doors. And I also have a camera. And when I had pulled up the camera footage, when I first woke up, my camera was facing downward. So the bear had taken the camera and turned it. He didn't want to be caught, huh? The black bear left muddy paw prints all over her porch. The animal also put dents in her car and ripped off her windshield wipers. There are no other reports of property damage caused by bears in that area. Virginia's James River has become a bucket list destination for thousands of people from around the world. Look at that. They come in search of the fish of a lifetime, blue catfish. The number We're not looking to, you know, push the, the population way down. We just want to get it under control so that we can support our fisheries and we can still, you know, protect our, our, our native species that we love. 
That means, among other things, encouraging people to keep the smaller blue catfish they reel in. The Virginia Department of Agriculture is supporting development of a commercial blue catfish industry on the James River. That could further help control blue catfish numbers to ensure the long-term success of the trophy fishery. Stay with us. Wavy News 10 at 5 starts right now.